Great to have you guys. I love doing these. We do this every week at noon right here. Rockstar's coming to you live from Washington, D.C. Beautiful out there. All right. Here is what I wanted you to be aware of first. One of the things I wanted to talk about is how to not become the blockbuster of real estate. That's the first topic that I wanted to go over with you. Give you some tools and tips and advice so that you don't end up on the graveyard of real estate. Because as you're going to see during the broadcast today, there's another wave coming, a wave of change, a wave that is not fueled or driven by our industry. And that's what makes it dangerous. And that's what makes a lot of agents blind. And I don't want you to be blindsided. You guys remember Blackbuster? Are you movie fans out there? Are big fans of, uh, we watched, we rewatched again Lord of the Rings, right, uh, last night, the third one. We have the whole six movies, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I'm a huge fan of that. So I watched it with the kids last night. Anybody remember Blockbuster? You guys do? Where you used to drive somewhere, pick up v video cassettes. Remember video cassettes? Please be kind, rewind. Remember that? And later DVDs. And it was pretty much the only game in town other than the little independent shops where most of the perps just go for porn. But us <laughs> regular folks would go to Blockbuster. What sucked about Blockbuster were two things. What I hated about it, and tell me if I'm wrong. Number one, you'd have to drive, you have to find the movie, hope that out of the five or ten copies that they had, not all of them would be rented. You get one, then you come home, you watch it, and then you had to bring it back, because if it didn't, what they get you is what? Exactly. The late fees. The fucking late fees. Didn't you hate that? You forget to return it the next day, next thing you know, you could have bought 20 of those goddamn movies. Right? Fast forward to today. Who crushed Blockbuster and who put them out of business? Netflix, precisely. But think about this. It was not Netflix that caused Blockbuster to be in shambles and done and gone. What it was, was you and I, the consumers, because we didn't want to get nickel and dimed for late fees if we didn't watch the movie and didn't return it on time. We didn't want the inconvenience to keep driving somewhere, picking up videos, dropping off videos. We wanted to be entertained. We wanted a better way to watch movies. We didn't mind paying for it. Smart company came and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're not only going to ship you the movies, any movie you want, on a lovely Blu-ray disc, high quality. You can keep it as long as, as, long as you want. If you want to watch it, send it right back. We're going to send you one right away. And they're pretty good at it, right? If you're still getting the disc like we do. But on top of that, all you need is a decent internet connection and you can just stream it at your home. Binge on TV shows, do whatever you want. No late fees, no bullshit. Now, people said, Netflix brilliantly put Blockbuster out of business. Incorrect. It was the consumer-driven desire to watch what you want to watch, when you watch, no commercials, no late fees, on your terms. It was the consumer who triggered the avalanche that killed Blockbuster. Are you with me? Does it make sense? Same thing is happening in the cab industry. Uber is not crushing the taxi industry. You and I are because we want a cleaner car. We, I want to know how much it's going to cost me to get to my destination, what kind of car I want, the size, when is it going to arrive, and I don't have to mess with cash or credit cards or anything. All paid for my phone. It's the convenience that's crushing the taxi industry who did not respond to consumer demand. Same way we listen to music. That's why you have iTunes. That's why you have Spotify. That's why you have Pandora. All these companies who listen and pay attention and watch what's going on. What is the consumers? What do they want? Brian, thank you for your nice comment about the Video Plus. As you guys know, we, we put together a course. I can actually run a little clip just here to my <laughs> left. Uh, it's called uh, Real Estate Video Plus. And I worked on it, we worked on it, my company worked on it for the last seven months to help you, teach you how to put together good videos, real estate videos, simple with just your smartphone. No expensive gadgets, no expensive cameras, no nothing. You can do this right away. As a matter of fact, if you watch this little clip I posted this morning, that's an actual lesson from the course. You will have about 38 in the final one, just like this one. You will produce two videos right there, right during the lesson, which is the magic of it. Not only will I teach you how to do videos, what to talk about, how to set it up. But you will, you and I together will actually start producing these videos. So by the time you're done with the course, you're going to have at least a dozen of them produced and ready to go. My point is this. The reason I spent so much time on this course and I want it to be the best course that is out there, and you know me, I don't like hype. It's because, not because I believe that it's good or because 
I think this will make me money. Yeah, of course it will make me money. I hope so. I hope you guys will come aboard. But here's the real reason. According to the National Association of Realtors study combined with Google study, Google and NR got together and did a research. And this is the stat they found. This. <laughs> it's right here. 85% of your potential clients want to work with an agent who uses video. 85%. So it's not whether you like video, whether you want video, whether you think it's sexy. I believe it's sexy and it's fun. It's actually a lot cooler and a lot easier to produce than a bunch of other marketing and prospecting you have to do. But it is not about you and I. It is not about our preferences. It is not about preferences of NAR or real estate agents. It is about the preference of the consumers. And they're right here. They told us. They told us exactly what they want. They prefer an agent who uses video because that agent is perceived as more uh, advanced in terms of technology, easier to relate to because video, just like you're watching me on video right now, creates a bond and connection. You cannot do that over the phone or with email or with text. Video can do that. There's a psychological reason and in the video plus, by the way, we go into more of all that. Not only how it works, why it works, the human psychology, how we perceive people on video on the screen and television, but here we can implement those strategies and techniques. It's a very simple stuff. Once you get it, it's going to be a second nature. My entire point is this. You and I want to stay in this business. You want to be a successful rock star. It's not going to be about your preferences. It is going to be about your ability to understand what the public wants, and react to it. Be able to shift your marketing, your philosophy, and your approach to accommodate that. So you don't end up like the cabs, you don't end up like the blockbuster, you don't end up like everybody else who thought we're too big. Anybody remember Kodak? Remember Kodak? The cameras? How arrogant, how big, how unflexible they were, where are they today? And when they finally realized, holy shit, digital, fuck, what do we do? They started pursuing digital cameras. They didn't see iPhone. They didn't see that we're going to have this magic device in our pocket. They'll be able to do HD, 1080p, high quality video where you need cameras. Pay attention to your customers. Listen to what they want. There are a lot of resources out there, a lot of places where people will voice their desires. They will voice what they want. They will tell you if you pay attention. Is this all making sense? So this is not just my evil scheme to sell you on the real estate video plus, which is coming out on August 21st. I would love for you to be on board. I think it's going to be great. You're going to get tons of stuff with it, tons of tools, tons of resources. You're going to get an audio library and slides and you're going to get graphics and you're going to get sound effects and you're going to get a bunch of, there's over 103 topics, what to put in your video so you know what to talk about, you know how to prepare. It's all together and I will teach you how to do that in this course. But my point is this, whether you're going to do it with me or without me, start cranking videos. That is my today's message. And actually, we're going to talk about more about videos as, as we progress close to launch of the Video Plus. In my opinion, and in the stats and data and everybody who knows something about marketing online, including Facebook, who declared video is the way it's going to go, three out of four people on the internet right now are watching a video. So you're, you're probably already sold. I mean, you're a rock star. You're on top of it. You go to lab codes agents. You go to rock stars. You go to these groups. You know what's going on. Start doing videos. Cool? Are you on board with me? Are you going to do this? Post them here on Rockstars. We'll give you some criticism. Now, with videos, be ready that not everything will be perfect. <laughs> if you haven't watched that little clip, I encourage you to watch it. About halfway through, you're going to see one of my first videos. It's in that red. Have you seen it? With a red wall and a red table, I thought it's going to be clever because the cover <laughs> of the expired plus, my first book, was red. So we're going to kind of theme it together. It was horrible. It was like a whorehouse somewhere in Holland, you know, those big red walls. and stuff. It was terrible. I was stiff on the camera. I was nervous. Goes to show you, everybody can learn. <laughs> everybody can master this stuff. So can you. All right, so check it out when you have a chance. It's realestatevideoplus.com slash comfortable. Looks like you agree with everything. Wait for the video. Kim, wait for the video. Paul says, Kim, oh, I'd love to have you on board, Kim. I think you will enjoy it. Maka says, never done video before. That's going to be icebreaker for me. And that's a good place to be, Maka. Just like with anything else, like one of the examples I talk about, remember the first call you made? First time you knocked on somebody's door? First open house? True story. I was doing open house, my first open house. I was hoping people wouldn't stop. I was so nervous. Can you relate to that? Video is the same thing you will see that the camera is just another tool and it's going to become more and more prevalent to the point where agents who don't use video, they'll be out. Think about it. So you're in good hands. Don't worry. How you feel is okay. I'm going to teach you. Everything I'm going to share with you is a teachable skill. You don't need talents. You don't need beautiful looks. You don't need any of that. You can do it. So I'll walk you through it. Cool. Beth says, I have done a few videos, need to do more to get over the fear. And that's absolutely the trick. That's actually one of the strategies I'm going to share with you and teach you how I did it. 
you just start cranking them out. And if they're shitty, and some of them will be, be okay with that. I mean, you're gonna see my videos, some of them were shitty. Even today, sometimes we produce not the greatest videos. But many times, it's just to get the message out. Where it's not about pretty, it's not about beautiful, glitzy, fancy graphics, fancy inserts or sound effects or anything. It's just tell your story. So doing it over and over, getting the practice out there will be a good strategy that will get you up quickly. Kim makes a really good point. I like this. I've done several live videos and feel like a celebrity because they get so much exposure and people give positive feedback. Absolutely. But I need to learn how to make them more professional. And that is true. And because that's the downside of a video. If your video is hokey, if it's too salesy, or if it sucks, it can literally ruin your reputation. Because just as even okay video, not great, just okay, can pull people in. Bad video can push business away. Where you're going to look amateurish or salesy or needy or nervous or whatever. So that's the danger. Just like when you're on the phone and you come across as too pushy, too salesy or too needy, too low status, that can ruin your chance of getting that listing. You can do the same with video. So you got to be careful. That's why I put that course together. That's why it's pretty big. I mean, you're getting 40 lessons. There are 40 videos. Now, some of them are seven, eight minutes. They're pretty short. Some of them are a little longer. And you're going to get a 100-page workbook with it, with all those checklists, scripts, dialogues, content outlines to help you get up and running quickly. My goal is for you to start producing videos during the course quickly. But you're right about that. That makes perfect sense. Earl, you're absolutely right. Earl says videos are an awesome way to communicate. Here's what's cool about video, you guys. Video is the closest you're going to get to face-to-face -face conversation. There's no other tool that can accomplish that. Other than, of course, face-to-face -face conversation. But if, when it comes to marketing, prospecting, and communication to your prospects, it is so effective because it emulates that face-to-face -face communication that you normally have with people. That's what makes video so powerful. And if you wonder why is it that so many people feel like they know movie stars or like you and I know each other, don't you sometimes feel maybe we haven't talked, maybe we've never met, maybe I haven't met you in one of my seminars or, or, or in my workshops, but maybe we've never met, and yet we feel this connection. Why is that? There's a psychological reason again. And we get into that, and I will show you some hooks and tools during the course how you can engage that without shenanigans. This is not about doing the shitty stuff, you know, the influential kind of salesy stuff. You can do it in a very cool way where people suddenly feel like, shit, I really feel like I know Earl. Seems like a cool guy. I'd like to know more, or I'd like him to help us with our house. So it should be part of it. Now, I gotta be honest with you, as I'm always honest with you. Please don't misunderstand. Video is not the magic answer. Video will not re replace your prospecting or marketing. That's not the idea. It's not like, oh, fuck it. I don't have to call. I don't have to do anything now. <laughs> I'm doing videos. So that's not the case. But it has to be a big part of what you do, whether it's prospecting, whether it's connecting with your sphere, whether it's part of your follow-up. That's the cool thing about videos. You can not only use different videos for different, as different tools, but you can re uh, reproduce the same content for different tasks. So if you want to keep in touch with your SOI, you can use video for that. You can use it for fizzballs and expireds. There will be plenty of examples in the course how to do that. You can attract new leads. You can attract people in your neighborhood. There's all kinds of things. Buyers, sellers. You can use video as a big part of how you communicate with public. That's why I'm such a big fan of it. That's why I've been doing it for over 10 years. I mean, my YouTube channel, we've been on for 11 years now. We've got 12,000 subscribers, million views. So I know a thing or two about video. So I want to teach you. I want to help you. Okay? Very good question, Mr. William May from California, who's going to do the bootcamp with us. Does your course recommend a higher professional setup like the one you're using for the Facebook Live videos? Absolutely not. Everything I'm going to teach you, you're going to need a few very simple tools. And actually, watch out next week, William. I'm glad you asked that. Next week, next lesson from the course will be about the gear you're going to need. But that brings me to point number two that I wanted to share with you today. Number one reason people's videos suck is because they're stiff. They're not natural, they're not relaxed, they're trying to sell. They're not comfortable on camera and you can just tell. That's the first mistake. The second mistake is a technical mistake. Most agents screw up video. You're going to be surprised. It's not the video. You know what it is? You want to take a guess? Sound. They have a bad sound. Their video sucks, not because of the picture, but because of the quality of the audio. So I'm going to give you something, and one of you will win this. We're going to send you a new one, okay? This is a tool I recommend you get. Now, whether you get this brand or not, I don't get paid by them. This is not affiliation or anything, but this is the one I happen to use. The name of the company is Power Device. Power Device. Looks like this. Can you see it? All right? It's a little lav mic, similar to the one I wear. This, by the way, is a $25 Audio-Technica, but this one is even better, and i tell you why it's better. 
comes in a nice little pouch. That's waterproof, by the way, I think. So here's what it looks like. This is the whole gizmo. And this one will set you back about 20, 22 bucks on Amazon. Look at a power device. It's a nice little mic that has a little clip, just like the one I'm wearing. So you're gonna put this on your shirt, on your t-shirt, whatever you're wearing, you just clip it on. But here's where it gets cool. See this little plug right here? It has three black rings. That means it's ready for your smartphone. You can plug this into your Android phone or to your iPhone, your audio is ready. It gets even better. Comes with a little extension cord. So if you're using a stick, a selfie stick, or you're on a tripod, which I think you should be, you can extend the cord and you can be up to six feet away from your camera and you can still shoot a video. Get one of these bad boys. Highly recommended. Make sure the one you're gonna get is for your smartphone. The way you can always tell, three black rings on your connector. Next week in the video, I'm gonna go over five other things you should have in your video arsenal or around 20 bucks. Very inexpensive. You don't need fancy cameras. You don't need fancy equipment. Now, we have a whole studio, several studios here actually. I am a freak when it comes to equipment. I'm a gear whore, I admit it. It's just something I love. I love nice high-end equipment. The camera you're watching on right now is about $1,800. Do I need it? Absolutely not. I can deliver the same message to you pretty much from an iPhone, but it's just something I enjoy. But the good side, good, good news is you don't need any of that. Get a good mic. Start with that. Before you get anything else, you need one of these. Clip it on, use it for all your videos from now on, and watch how better your videos will be. Big mistake agents make. Not just agents, everybody. Poor audio. Make sure your sound quality is good. But there is a second step to it. Once you finish your video, let's say you record a little video introducing a new listing. There'll be an example in the video plus how to do exactly that. When you finish your take, you're gonna take out your headphones. Don't use the speaker on your phone, it's not good enough. You're gonna take out your headphones, the ones that came with your phone are good, or if you have nice headphones, whatever. Plug them in and listen to the take. Don't just watch the picture, listen to it. I tell you how I ruined many of my videos without even realizing it. I had a plane fly over, and I was so focused on, and a little nervous, maybe, delivering the video, I didn't pay attention. Take was ruined. I didn't check it. It was screwed. I had to do it over again. You can get wind, gust, hits your microphone, can ruin your take. Any ambient noise, number one, and number two, of course, watch for a background, make sure there are not people doing stupid shit or light is killing your take. So always check your take, okay? Put the headphones on, listen to it. Good tip, good advice. Ronald says, Borino, fucking not boring. Yeah, well, you know.